that uh, backwash rinse. It's just, it's just <laughs> straight vodka. <laughs> no. It's my YouTube. Paul just rolls around with a canister, a thermos of vodka. It's YouTube in his water. Off time. For, for sale. It's okay. cleansed. It's been, it's been cleansed. Oh, it should be live now. Hi. Hey. Hi, everyone. And welcome oh. to Awesome Hardware. This is a show. It's a live show. It's a live show. We are live right now. We talk about technology, uh, computers, other random stuff. We try to have a good time. Sometimes we succeed. Uh, so thank you for joining us. If you're watching us live, you might be doing that on YouTube on my channel, Paul's Hardware. Uh, or you might be doing that on Twitch, twitch.tv slash slash awesome hardware that works too. stream to both at the same time mm -hmm. through the magic of technology options we like we like Next options uh, in about half an hour 40 minutes we'll switch to Kyle's half second half on YouTube that will be on his channel which is linked in the description uh, if you also want to help support our channels then you can check out our stores quick plug for those my store is at paulshardware.net where I have shirts mugs fine glasses and other high quality things oh, oh geez look at sorry I fixed what? it what happened I was I it was overlapping. XSplit. You could see XSplit in the stream. It's very unprofessional. Oh, God. It's fixed now. Though. We are professionals. Uh, we got thumbscrew polo shirts back in stock if you guys are looking for those. If you need something to wear in a professional environment that still says, I like Paul's hardware, then get one of the... Here, here. There, there they are, right there. Professional, classy, stylish. Exactly. Uh, also, Trifecta. Also at Kyle's store, you can buy merchandise bitwit.tech slash store. Yep. Uh, it's also real nice. It all comes from the same place. Feel free to order from both stores if you want, uh, and it will ship together. You get a shipping discount. If you buy stuff, we'll give you a shout out at the end of the show when we do Johnson's. It's a great tradition. Sure Speaking of traditions, we typically drink a beer on the show. Today yep. we're drinking a very special beer, Pliny the Elder. Also, a quick word of warning, we occasionally use adult language, so uh, leave if you don't like that. Yes. Uh, that's all for the introductory part. Run for the hills. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass Kyle the ceremonial beer oh, opener thing. Oh wait, thank you, Paul. So he can work on that. I've looked forward to this all week. You saved it, like you've had it for a while. And I've had it. I, I saw. I spotted it in my fridge Sunday. Oh. When, is when my mom dropped it off, wow. and I've been anxiously awaiting this moment. Well, that's exciting. Since. Why is what's wrong with Twitch? Ah. Did you know? Did you know they use the? Uh, Why do I have nothing in Twitch chat over here? You probably already knew this, but did you know they they use the sound of a beer bottle being opened? for uh, the Overwatch uh, sound effect when you hit someone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be satisfying. Yes. Which it is. Oddly it's satisfying. Very, very satisfying. Especially when it's beer. We'll play some Overwatch on Kyle's half. Yes, we are. Right? Are a, we gonna, exactly, yeah, gonna totally. Yeah, that was a great transition there. Good yeah, plug. That's good. All right, how's what's happening? We're in a tight ship like? here. Tight show. Super Organized. Tight. Professional. All right. To the nth degree. <laughs> <laughs> what's scary? Oh, after all, this awesome to be mine. you're right here. Uh, you can have. All right, I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna leave. You, you can have some of mine. Bring a little glass over here. The wife. The wife gets some as well. Have, can't have any of mine. Wait, that's 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 my glass. Or no, is that your glass? I don't know. They're both the same. Okay. All right. Kyle's well, high if you don't mind cooties. If you don't mind cooties. Okay. So is that about even? Yeah, it's roughly even. All right. No, just, just take the bottle. Heather has come in just to take claim the, bottle. the remainder of the Pliny the Elder. Why, what's with, the, what's what's with the anger? Second time you've done this. Death face. Second time I've done this. Man. Pliny the Elder. It's, it's like... <sighs> I love marriage. It's like a MacGuffin in a film or something. It's like that thing that everyone desires. <laughs> the that MacGuffin. Causes, That's that causes, uh, causes all the conflict and everything. Yes. It's it's the diamond in Snatch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, maybe I'll be resenting Kyle secretly for the rest of the show because he poured me slightly less Pliny the Elder than he got. Or the rest of my life. Or, or for all time. <laughs> uh, this will all come back to haunt me in episode yeah. 535. Oh, yeah. That's all... <laughs> we've, We've been weaving this narrative through past episodes of Awesome Hardware. If, yeah, if you look at episode one, you'll see the Easter egg start dropping. There's some really intricate writing on this show. I'm surprised we don't get more credit. Way better than Game of Thrones. Absolutely. All right. I digress, as Jay likes to say. Oh, no. Things are horrible. Oh. I didn't fix any of this. <laughs> <laughs> we've been focused so blame. much on the Easter eggs and writing of the show that we've hashtag, forgotten all about production. Hashtag blame Kyle. No. What? Because you ch you used you wrote over the awesome hardware layout. Oh, I had to go oh, back okay. to the old one. Yes, that is true. Which hasn't been updated with the, with the Elgato. I was so frantic. Okay, it's it was okay. a time sensitive stream. It's I right. didn't have time to start it fresh. Was, it was good. I had People. to rape and pillage. That's fixed. The existing presentation. Some news. Tech All right. News. Well, let's cheers with our. Oh our yeah, Pliny cheers, here. Pl it's a Pliny. Cheers. Thanks cheers. for joining us, guys. Oh. So good. It's like a thousand angels had an <sighs> orgasm, and all the juice mm. is, is, is filtered it, in, into it, a 
What? What? <laughs> so we're drinking angel jizz. <laughs> Well, I didn't specify. It's just sure. the juice. Whether it, I mean, I don't want to get into angel morphology or anything like that. But Pliny, like, Pliny is the the elder who yeah. has married. Wow. At least twenty twenty of the. It's delicious. The pure angels. All right. Speaking of delicious, check it out. Uh, this is. Oh no. <laughs> I'm just gonna move that. I'm moving that. All right. So I can't do that anymore. Sorry. This is all going so well. <laughs> Really trying to keep up the facade that we have a... <laughs> that we know what we're doing. It's a really good show. <laughs> All right. Check it out, guys. Sony has a new camera. Uh, wow. I bring this up because I want it. <laughs> Vaguely. I don't know. I have GH5s right now, and I'm, I get jealous of the A7A. So the expensive, other, the S, though. The Mark III. Yeah. Because it's no, got a full-frame sensor. They're beautiful. When it comes to digital photography and videography, there's no more fundamental, I think part of the camera than the sensor itself. And of the course. bigger the better. The bigger the better. Yes. There's other things that can make sensors better than others. Yep. Uh, this one for the A7R, the Alpha 7R Mark IV from Sony is a full frame 61 megapixel Whoa. sensor that they have in this relatively, relatively small body camera here. Here's a video play, play part of it, anyway. Uh, $10,000. Yes. Uh, some specs for you guys. Burst speed of up to 10 FPS. That's for photography. 15 stops of dynamic range. It, it features a brand new full frame BSI CMOS image sensor. Uh, they, this, wait, was, I, I, did a, <laughs> 10 I, did, I did a quote here and I don't know what it is. Video what, idea. Can you game on a about. camera? What? Can you aim? <laughs> can you game on a camera? Can you game on a camera? It's 10 Possibly. FPS. It has AI built into it. There you go. That's like, all you need like for gaming. Like it uses AI for that search. If you have a bunch of pictures, you can tell it, look, look for this face or something, and then it will tell you all the... You can, all like, the, type it in, like, look for Kyle. I don't... Uh, it's, it's... This is all from the article, so I don't know exactly how that works. I assume it all works perfectly, though, and seamlessly, and exactly like they say. Though. Of course. Um, As do all advertisements. This fancy sensor is an evolution of Sony's built-in sense... No, 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 I'm sorry. The sensor... In and of itself, 61 megapixels, which is huge. huge. Uh, they, there's also a bunch of stuff in the article about using it in, uh, what is it, the crop down mode? APS-C mode, which is, which is a smaller format for, a, 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 it's a long number full frame when it comes to the image sensor, si sensor sizes. Point being, it has something called a multi-shot mode, sensor shift multi-shot mode that can create a 240 megapixel image from 16 separate pixel shifted images containing a total of 963.2 million pixels of data. So it's like, it, it, I, I don't know, it does a... It's AI. <laughs> it's Hashtag AI. AI. That's all you need to know Hashtag is AI. AI's in it and it's doing everything and it's better than your camera. Yeah, exactly. AI. Get bigger, not smaller. Yes, AI okay. is a, such a buzzword nowadays. That is true. Um, so there, there, there's some pictures of it. Uh, it has 567 phase detection autofocus points covering 74% of the image area. That also means that when you use it in AFSC mode, it covers 100% of the area. Although, again, you're cropping down your sensor, which is, why would you do that? Mm. I'm sure there's use cases for that. Sure. Uh, Real-time tracking autofocus. Real-time eye autofocus. Actually, this is shown in the video better, so let me, let me keep some. Hmm. The, some of the autofocus images, I mean, they're, they're just simulations or whatever, but like, let's talk about the autofocus points, and it, it does animal autofocus, so autofocus like if you have a dog, or, yeah. or if you have a cheetah, okay. yeah. uh, you know, you can use it for that. Um, this is that AI recognition, so like, oh, I like this person, look at them, and then search through all my pictures, uh, and this is color and pattern data that hmm. it does. That's kind of like a creeper feature, you there's, know? There's the AI thing. Like, all right, Subject, find all the pictures of Sally mm -hmm. that I took through her window. Yeah, so very it saves a bunch of time. It's very Silence of the Lambs. It's very creepy. Okay. Uh, I autofocus. That's a Visla, by the way. Visla. Is that Which the is name a, of the dog? That's the breed of dog. Yeah. Which is a, a gorgeous dog. My sister used to have a Visla. Oh, it's very pretty. Her name was Jesse. A nice uh, coat. It's got this new shoe mount, which can has multi-functions, but it's got this uh, mic that goes on top. The mic is no. digital, but then it provides a... Com I'm sorry, the mic is analog, of course, when, as far as where it picks up the, the audio, but then it, ha it has a full digital connection to the camera itself, so mm. it doesn't seem to require, like, a... a, a Battery? No. You know, or a, a soft mount, one of the... Oh, like a um, dead cat or a foam... No, you don't want to. What, oh, oh, the shock, shock, the shock mount. mount. Right. That's what it's called. Yeah. Yes. Remembering my words. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's kind of fun. Ah, interesting. Okay. 
I hate I hate their flip up cameras though because they don't really flip up so that you can do selfie mode when you're recording video, like if you're vlogging or something, which I've I I, I feel like is a deal breaker for me for how I shoot my videos. I feel is, like I'd really can't flip up high enough. It's it's great for the the RX. Our, the RX, RX 100 because it's small enough that it's you can small enough it goes it. over that but the viewfinder blocks the screen so yeah. you could really only shoot get like low angles but you can't actually turn it around 180. If it flipped to the side like the 70D or something like that, that that's I'll consider true. it. That is better for selfie selfie doing of selfie things. It's just it sounds like a really stupid deal breaker like well, well but it's an amazing camera but I feel like for for someone like me it, that that is very important. You know, and obviously it depends on the user, but okay. if I can't see what I'm shooting, if I'm shooting myself or something behind me, it's, it's kind of a... Yeah, that's true. It's hard to uh, you could You could mount like a, an LCD to it or something, but that, that would yeah. be very heavy to carry all that. Right. You know, one, one-handed as you selfie video yourself. Yeah. For a vlog or something. Plus that's another power source, um, cables. So yeah, I mean, obviously not for everyone, but... Um, but I'm that, sure it's very that nice. That mic is the ECM B1M. Uh, Anyway, other features, just to rattle them off real quick. Dual uh, ultra high speed 2 SD card slots, uh, enhanced weather sealing, and ultra high resolution 5.76 million dot uh, electronic viewfinder, USB type C for tethering, fast built in Wi Fi with support for wireless tethering, 5.5 stops, 5 axis in body image stabilization, uh, as well as a refined button layout for, e for easier autofocus control and a deeper grip, which apparently people have been requesting compared to the other version of the Ace of the Mark III. Uh, this is coming in September, and it's already available for pre-order for $3,500. $3,500. And I... You're pre-ordering? I don't know. Should I pre-order? I don't... How much better is it going to be than your GH4 or your GH5? I don't know. I don't, is it going to be thirty like, five hundred dollars? I'm not a big, I'm not a big camera guy either. I don't. I don't do fancy camera Neither shots. Neither am I. Fancy lighting and stuff. Yeah. All the precise focus and, and all that kind of stuff. No. My quality's been garbage lately. I who love cares? it. Because who cares? I mean, what, it's YouTube. It's for the web. It doesn't. Yeah. It's you know. Really, and you just like. Like I. So, it, I feel like people treat that that like videography like like oh if you don't do that then 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 you suck and that's wrong. Yep. I was I was gonna say more there, but I felt <laughs> I got halfway into that sentence and I was like I need to cut this off, so I just <laughs> said it much shorter. All right. Point being, cool camera. I need to decide whether or not to drop thirty five hundred bucks on a pre order. Leaning towards no, but I don't know. I don't know. I have, I have a question. Let me know what you get. How come pre-ordering a camera before reviews are out is something that you're considering? Whereas pre-ordering, say, a CPU before reviews are out is clearly shunned upon and just not even a, a, an option worth considering. That cuts me deep, Kyle. That, that, <laughs> that cuts me to the core of my being. Is, there, right. is there a difference? All right. I don't, I don't want to say that I'm special. But, but I'm you are. special. But you are special. I'm a special <laughs> flower. I'm unique. No. All right. I will. I will. I will put forward that for some people who create coverage of tech content, with YouTubers like us or otherwise, there might be a bit more of an incentive to pre-order, because whether or not the product sucks or doesn't suck, you're going to be one of the first to get it, and you know do a review on it or something like that. And there might be added value in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also look at it like as a, like like I'm making a sacrifice. I'm taking one right. for the team. Sure. You know what if it does suck, but yeah. I drop the thirty five hundred bucks. Right. Get that right off the bat, and then I come out and be like, guys, this sucks. Right. Then you know I'm doing a service to the to everyone out there, to the community. Yeah. And you're trying to it's very to, noble. You're trying to, to to talk me out of that. Why Why are you such a dick? To all the people who are watching this show right now, Kyle. <laughs> I'm I not. Think you I'm not. Explain. Okay. So I apologize. So what you're saying is to all the that people was, out there. Fun. I like to twist it. <laughs> you're very manipulative. So you make a great beard, politician. Beard back around until it was aimed at you. You, you put the oh, Paul okay. in politician. Um, so what you're saying is the people out there who are saying like never pre-order anything. Uh, you're basically telling them that, in your own words, and I've heard you quote this before, right. is to never speak in absolutes. That's true. <laughs> Never speak in absolutes. No. Just def I, always, I always say that. <laughs> I never do. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Okay. Let's move on. 
All right. We get some more tech stuff. Uh, B450 and X470 motherboards, existing 400 series motherboards for AMD Ryzen series processors are still very viable for lots of people because you can find good deals on them and they're perfectly functional. And if you don't need PCI Express Gen 4, you can drop a Ryzen 3000 series processor into it and get the vast majority of the benefits that the new processors offer when it comes to IPC improvements and speed and more cores and all that good stuff without having to necessarily upgrade to one of the very much more expensive X570 motherboards. But mm -hmm. could you have your cake and eat it too and still get PCI Express Gen 4 on a B450 and X470 motherboards? Oh. We've actually discussed this multiple times on the show oh. because it's been speculated about and there were early BIOSes that had the option in it. And there's a little bit more on this today. It's both good news and bad. The good news is that yes, Asus, in fact, and I'm going to scroll past this here to this screenshot. Uh, this was posted originally on the Chinese media site My Drivers. And this is apparently directly from Asus, a list of their existing motherboards and the support that they offer for PCI Express Gen 4. Are those PlayStation controller symbols? Yeah, I don't know why they went with this strange X triangle symbol circle for what it does and, and square. does not support. It's l it literally has all the same symbols yeah, it's, uh, as a PlayStation controller. Slightly awkward there, but... <laughs> The point being, why China, Tom's why? Hardware, fortunately, has taken that all and put it on a nice chart here that makes it a little bit easier to read. Uh, so the point being, this does seem to be a, a legitimate source. We're, we're not verified or anything, so this is still kind of in the realm of, you know, rumor and, and stuff. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Th this, this all seems pretty legit to, to me, looking at it. Sure. Uh, Asus apparently went and tested and validated PCI Express 4.0 functionality on their pretty much their entire X470 and B450 lineup, and they found that they were able to say that yes, PCI Express Gen 4 works on quite a, quite a few of them. Uh, the weird thing is that the higher-end motherboards have less support, right? X470 mm. is at the top here. Uh, the only support that you get is going to be in the top PCI Express by 16 slot, and then the M.2 slot that's wired directly to the CPU, uh -huh. not, not through the chipset. Right. So if you look at all the X470s here, the best you can get is a by 8 support, and that's not even on the high-end ones. The Crosshair 7 Hero and Wi-Fi were the most expensive X470 Why? boards. Why is that? They have zero support, and they've got by 4. They do have support for the M.2 slot. I, I, you know, I'm not really sure. Do you think that's just coming later, or that's, that's never going to be an option on those boards? Because it doesn't seem like there's a reason why. Well, to, all right, so have. to be clear here and to jump ahead, because I want to I want to look at this list, but let's just jump ahead. AMD, it, well, a lot of the news sites kind of were discussing this, and AMD has come out and said, yes, this might exist right now for some of these early BIOS versions, or what, early PCA whatever. Gen 4 the support? The Gen 4 support, but it is not officially supported by AMD. Mm -hmm. uh, the quote from the article is that AMD hasn't completely blocked out the functionality yet, but... Users should expect this option to be disabled when final retail BIOSes are released. So we're going to have a situation where, yes, there are a few existing older BIOS versions that you could load up and get Gen 4 support on a 400 series motherboard, but you're not going to see new BIOS versions or official BIOS versions supporting that. Supporting it. So mm. if you want support for the latest Agisa code, code for your for your 3000 series processor updated support for memory or other stuff. And there's been a pretty decent amount of sort of extra sauce added to mm -hmm. the AMD platform. Like if you look at the Ryzen stuff with early version BIOSes with later ones. So in my mind, this is going to become kind of a niche thing. I, I was yeah. trying to figure out what use case this might have. And I'm like, ah, uh, because because you don't really need Gen 4 for like graphics. Yeah. But this was something that unlocked some you know, more cores and threads on your CPU or some massive improvement in, in graphics performance or something right. like that. I can see people going with these older BIOSes yeah. in order to take advantage of that. But here, I feel like we might, we might have some edge cases, like, I don't know, someone trying to, tr trying to put together a super budget but really fast storage server or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you get, like, one of the new 3000 series uh, APUs. Yeah and that has Gen 4 support right. and use it with like a cheap B450 motherboard. Yeah. And and for the by 16 slot, you put like a Ryzen card with, with M.2 drives in it. I don't know, sure. something like that. Or like a really high-end 
like like a budget high end editing system. Like if you were, let's say, in college and you were limited on cash flow, but you were trying to do like an eight K independent film for your senior thesis or something like that. Maybe maybe PCI Gen four is something that you need, but you don't have the cash flow to spend on like a super high end build. Maybe there's a possibility there because that was one of the demos that AMD showed us as as to the the benefit of PCI Gen four is with an eight K editing workflow. Um, I don't know the details of how that was tested or their testing methodology. That'd be interesting to find out. But it seems like uh, super fast storage needs are one of the main focuses for PCI Gen four right now until yeah. until GPUs can actually leverage more bandwidth. And and there's a lot fewer people who are looking for that, you know, when it comes. To yeah. Point. So anyway, it's um, super slim. It's it's still an interesting thing to look at. I don't know if anyone's gonna try to grab some of these BIOS. That's the other thing. I don't know which BIOS versions you'd need to enable this, or if they're available publicly or anything like that. But just to just to run down the list, if you want to look at the B450 motherboards, there are quite a few that have BI16 support in the top PCIe slot and BI4 support in the M.2 slot. And the funny thing is, a lot of them are further down the product stack. Like the, it's just kind of weird so to me. Weird. It's not what I would expect. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of this boils down to like trace layouts for the uh, connections between the CPU and the slot itself, and how long they are. And other than that, I I don't I don't want to speculate. Too so much. weird. But, um, all right. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Kind of an, a, a unique, interesting little edge case for the new Ryzen 3000 series processors. And let's move on. A couple, so we have a mini like, like uh, hot and heavy hardware here. Just a couple product launches that you may or may not be interested in. G Scale has announced their Trident Z Nero Neo, not Nero Nero Neo DDR4 memory. Yes. Specifically aimed at Ryzen 3000 and X570 series. And uh, here's here's some pictures of them. This cool. is on Guru 3D. I saw these. This was the like one of the very few things I was actually interested in at the G Skill booth at Computex this year. Yeah. And they had hardly any information on it other than it's going to be targeted at Ryzen 3000. And yeah. and do you like the way it looks? I was like, well, it looks kind of like the old one. Uh, you know, the existing very Trident ZRGB, to the old one. except it's got sort of like a different design on that that gray area like there. Like here, yeah. It's just a different texture on yeah. this spot right here. Right. Everything else seems exactly the same, except that it says Neo. At, at Computex, they were fiddling around with different plate colors, like they had red point. and blue. And I told them no. I just looked at them. I was like, I think it was Way or someone. I was like, no, oh, all right, no, don't. So it's your fault. Don't do it. And, and so far, all of the marketing uh, images and photos that have been coming out, the renders uh, of these sticks, have been color neutral. This seems to be the only design all, that, they, that they have at this point. It's all my doing. Um, You're welcome. Anyway, there's some more screenshots. Here's, here's the actual list of kits that they are coming out with. And these are higher frequency kits, 2666 speed up to 3600. 3600 is going to be kind of like the recommended go-to sweet spot for Ryzen 3000, so a lot of... Uh, People who are putting new builds together, that's kind of what we recommended what you should aim for. So good that they have a few options here. They have a 1.4 volt cast latency 14 or 14, 15, 15, 35 uh, timed kit, 2 by 8 gig or 4 by 8 gig. And then they've got this, this one, a 1.2 volt kit that's uh, cast latency 18, so maybe slightly lower power. I don't yeah. know, good use you'd get out of that. Um, hmm. And then, then, then there's a few in between, so we'll have to kind of wait and see what the pricing is on this. It's not listed in the article. Hopefully, it is competitive. And uh, yeah, I guess for anyone, the, the other thing about Ryzen 3000 though is that it's supposed to be a lot more widely compatible. Right. Um, but which I've found to be true so far in my testing. Well, there you go. Any sticks I throw in there, it's just like so. Screw bleep. these. Then who, who needs any of these? Oh yeah. Just get some existing memory that's cheaper. Um, but yeah. Black brushed aluminum and powdered powder coated silver. So fancy. All right, uh, one last bit of tech hardware news. AOC's Aegon monitors are have been announced. They're actually available now. You can order them on Amazon. Uh, you may be interested in, in these if you are like a Twitch gamer, I guess, because they have really fast response time. 0.5 milliseconds MPRT response time, as well as a 240 hertz refresh rate. So. Yeah, for hmm. the for the esportsers out there, it's got this red back, which I don't know. What do you what do you think of the red back? 
Uh, it doesn't bother me. The back, the back of monitors don't bother me. They, they, there could be it. like, there could be like Bozo the Clown on the back of it, and I wouldn't care because okay. I don't really. It, it never gets seen by you or anyone else okay. in the room. Stand looks sort of okay. Uh, it's, it has what height and tilt adjust, adjustment, but not pivot. Anyway, um, no oh, pivot. What's uh, going on here? I like the pivot. I need okay. my pivot. I need my pivot, pal. Uh, so two models coming out. One is 24.5 inch, one is 27 inch. They're both TN panels. 1920 by 1080 resolution with 400 nits of brightness. Dynamic refresh rate up to 240 hertz. So that's kind of the other big selling point besides the really fast response time. 48 to 240 hertz free sync range over DisplayPort or HDMI. Also has low frame rate comp compensation. DisplayPort, HDMI, DVI-D and D-Sub connectors. Interesting that D-Sub would still be in there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, built-in quad port USB 3.0 hub, 3.5 millimeter audio input and output so you can pass through from your sound card. Uh, two three watt speakers. They probably suck, but I'd still <laughs> rather them be there than not. Uh, red accents. Oh yeah, just height and tilt on the stand and there's something called a quick switch button to rapidly switch from one mode to another. There's like a really ultra low response time mode that like completely removes any signal processing from the monitor itself mm -hmm. to do the fastest click to response. So anyway. Uh, these, I was hoping that these would be a little bit more competitively priced, but I guess when you're looking at the really high refresh rate, it's not that horrible. The 24.5 inch one AG251FZ2 is $330, and the uh, smaller one, the, I'm sorry, the bigger one, Big the one? 27 inch is $380. So 330 380 and they are not available in Europe. Man, how, how good, how good of a gamer do you have to be? To, to buy a TN panel just because it has a faster response time. TN panels have come a long, a long way. I think they have their place. Have they? Yeah. I got, they're not, they're I got not sent crap. one last year, and I was very underwhelmed. You were, and it was a top-of-the-line TN panel. Okay. Uh, maybe but I just had a really good IPS panel next to it that was making it look lousy, but it yeah. just... Yeah. I mean, and, you, and you, you're, you're also one who has had the visual experience of a lot more high-end monitors than most people. So, yeah. You know, you might be I know. A little spoiled. I'm in that, super spoiled. In that regard. But mm. anyway. I'm a jerk. But yeah. It seems very nice. The specs are... I just thought it was interesting the interesting. Right. article points out. Not available in Europe. Just anyone in Europe, just fuck you. You can't get these monitors. I don't know why. They're just, Damn. Just Europe. That's harsh. Everywhere but Europe. Sorry, European viewers. All right, let's move on. Damn One more heroes. segment. It's going to burn. Let's, wait, where did it go? One more segment. Oh, I didn't update it. <clears throat> oh, no, everything's horrible. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to fix this. Hey, this is much more photogenic than us. Fix this what right. happened to the... What? Okay, the, the picture quality it was good. Is... Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Move move XSplit to this monitor really quick. Hold on. I need I need my, my oh joy. Where did it go? Oh joy. Because do you see how lousy the picture quality looks there? It looks like it's all whitewashed. <laughs> Yeah, so there is your monitor comparison. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, that's a TN, that's an IPS. It looks, yeah, infinite. But somebody worse. else in chat said, also, I, both I, I, I was looking at it here, and then I looked at it in, in the, on the... It looks fine there. Thing where it looks fine. So, yeah, okay. I don't know. I'm just making sure that Adam. they're seeing decent quality. All right, so Oh Joy is a segment about um, terrible, terrible things, and... Um, Typically, we offer no solution for them, so it's pretty, pretty, pretty much that's, a downer. That's what makes the title but, of this uh, segment so sarcastic. Yeah, exactly. Absolute sarcasm. Bit of a theme for this one, and that is that you are being watched. Well, not watched. Obviously, we are because we're, we're streaming. being watched. You are being listened to. Oh, even them. Even yeah. you're being listened to. Yeah, you to. guys. Like everyone watching this right not now. Not in a good way. You're being listened to. Perhaps without your consent. Even when you're naked. And that information Maybe. is being shared with people who you don't know. Nudes. Who are then listening to yeah. the things that you are saying, the sounds emanating from the most private areas of your life. And the most private parts. And the most of, private parts. Of your body. Of your privates. <laughs> <laughs> what are the most private parts of your privates? <laughs> it doesn't... <laughs> it would be like a nipple. Oh, God, I'm getting copyright claims just like constant. The, all are you serious? Today. From what? All From who? Today. Probably all the same person. Oh, these are all, if they come oh, into batch like that, it's usually some like one dick hole that's... Ad rev. Oh. Which I just, I have to go and claim. Oh. 
they they are released, but like I have to go and manually re like do it. Just Can you tell full screen to do it? I should. This would be showing off. No, shut up. I mean, what are you paying him for? Face, you stupid. Just tell full screen. Just say do something. What am I, I, what am I, I cutting you know. checks for every month? Because last time it happened it. and I got pissed off about it, but then I disputed them all, and then they were all released, and then I was like, okay. <laughs> but now it's, it's just the past couple days it's been happening again. All right. Uh, it's appropriate that it should pop up in the Oh Joy segment. Amazon workers are listening to what you tell Alexa. All you Alexa users. Ah! I have Alexa somewhere in this house. That sucks. Really? Yeah. You have the, the, the Google one, too. Well, I have Google, and I also have Alexa. I only have Alexa because I bought it for a video, because oh. I did a, a showdown between and Google just, and Alexa with my you, grandpa, because he has a thick accent. Oh, yeah. And now yeah. and now I actually use it only for our, our shades. We have uh, roller shades that are Amazon Alexa enabled. So I can be like, Alexa, open the shades, and it'll... Nee. So it's kind of a like, cool smart for, smartphone feature that's not, nah. or a smart home feature that's not uh, currently supported by Google that seems, Assistant. That seems like a super reasonable thing to give up your personal privacy for. for Definitely. That, that convenience. Now, now the only like everyone at Amazon knows when I open my shades, <laughs> and they can use that information against me. Well, that, maybe then, but all right. So hear me out here. I'm scared. So globally, this is why I know so many of you are being listened to right he now. He loves the sun. Consumers bought 78 million smart speakers last year. That's Ooh. across all of them. Uh, Amazon Echo, which was originally launched in 2014. Damn. There's the Google Home, of course. There's Apple's HomePod. Uh, you know, I keep getting this stupid commercial when we're watching Overwatch League. Wait, no, it's not Overwatch League. We've been watching Overwatch League mm -hmm. and House Hunters. Like, ah. That's all. It's been, <laughs> I think it's a House Hunters one. Anyway. Um, so Google's probably just He's, recommending he, you yeah, all this it's, shit. It's the Property Brothers guys, and they're like, they're like, smart home stuff has changed our lives, and <laughs> blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck you. It has changed up. my life. I've avoided <laughs> yeah. this all like a plague. <laughs> Point being, lots of people have bought you. these smart speakers, and they like to ask Google and Alexa things and hear the response and, and control stuff with their voices and everything. It makes you feel like you're in the future. Yep. Is it worth it, though? Alexa voice review pr the the Alexa voice review process has been described by seven people who worked in the program because there is a human role in training these software algorithms to recognize speech and provide accurate helpful answers to it. Uh, the article describes a mix of contractors and full-time Amazon employees working in outposts from Boston to Costa Rica, India, and Romania. Uh, they typically work nine hours a day. Each reviewer parses as many as 1,000 audio clips per shift, mm. um, and they describe it as uh, a range. A lot of it is boring work, pulling up clips that say, ta that say Taylor Swift, for example, mm -hmm. and then telling the, the software that those are, they're referring to the musical artist Taylor Swift. Not like a, and a, not a the, tailor, like I want a really fast and tailor and to fix like my I, shoes swiftly. I need a suit like pre pronto. Right. Right? Yeah. Uh, See? <laughs> Could be could be misconstrued in different ways. Yes, it can. But these workers also hear other stuff, uh, ranging from anything like a woman singing badly off key in the shower, to stuff that's slightly more discur disturbing, like a child screaming for help, and sometimes even even upsetting stuff, such as uh, possibly what might have been a sexual assault that was described by a couple of workers in the article. Whoa! So it's hearing things even without people saying, "Hey Alexa." Well, Kyle. Wait until I get to the second oh. half of the story to, to talk a little bit more about that. Okay. Give some more details on that. Um, interestingly, the article also describes Echo owners frequently asking the Echo itself the paranoid questions such as, do you work for the NSA? <laughs> or Alexa, is someone else listening to us right now? Yeah, like because Alexa would just tell you the I, truth. I'm paranoid our smart speaker might be listening to us and monitoring the stuff we do. How, how can you be sure? Let's ask it. Alexa, blink I'm once. Sure, I'm sure it can't lie. Um, <laughs> being controlled by AI and, and yes, everything. Yes, the world is spying on you. Anyway. Destroy me. Further article here on uh, the same topic from uh, ARS Tech, Ars Technica. I keep bringing that. Ars Technica about Google. For those of you who are like, well, I don't have Alexa. I have Google. And, and Or for those of you who are like, I don't have a smart speaker in my home, but maybe you have an Android phone that does have Google, Google Assistant. Assistant enabled. Sure. Because this is about workers listening to your OK Google queries. Mm. I just said that. Is it, did it pick it up? Here's the definition of query. A question, especially one addressed to See? an official or 
It's listening to us. My Google Home and his phone just responded with the definition of the what definition a query is. Of query. Okay, Google. Shut the fuck up. Stop it. Stop it. Does Stop listen. it. it does listen when you tell it to shut up. How many of your phones did that at the same time? This is kind of creepy. It's, it's like an interesting <laughs> social experiment, but it's also a little creepy. <laughs> it's very creepy. All right. So this uh, article specifically talks about, I mean, a lot of this, a lot of the discussion about this that's been going on this week in particular is from a specific leak. Uh, it's about, of about a thousand voice recordings to a media outlet called VRT News, uh, which is in Belgium. So Flemish. Belgian Belgians are listening to our in the shit? the Flemish region of Belgium, which means they, they, they have, have a lot of, of loogies. They have a lot of loogies. <laughs> <laughs> like how we were both exactly <laughs> on the same page, like we could read each other's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know where you're going with this. Is it good? Maybe it's... <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I want to visit there. I've heard it's beautiful, but I just can't, ha can't that handle that loogies <laughs> all the time. All right. Um, I, I, apologies to any of our <laughs> European viewers. Much offense has been cast in your direction. You Flemish bastards. All right. Um, so anyway, the news, news organization contacted a couple of workers, uh, specifically who worked for Google, uh, and they were actually able to get more than a thousand Google Assistant recordings from them. Uh, so th this isn't just like them talking to them about what they do and hearing them. They actually provided them with the Google Assistant recordings. Uh, yeah, this is from a Google subcontractor specifically. So uh, this, the recordings would be sourced from Google Home smart, Google Home smart speakers, Android devices like your phones, uh, as well as Chromebooks. Uh, they said in the recordings you could clearly hear addresses as well as other sensitive information that made it easy for the uh, VRT News to contact the people involved and confront them with the audio recordings. Which mm. I'm sure isn't creepy at all. Nope. Some, Journalists being like, hey, I have a recording of you asking <laughs> what query creepy. means or whatever the hell. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Ugh. Google Home is only supposed to record when, when users say the keywords. Right. Hey, G. I, uh, so I, I feel bad repeating again because yeah. we've already said that. I apparently turned but someone's TV off. I'm sorry, <laughs> you guys. Okay, G or the hey, G. We're trying to truncate them and hey, so we, G. The, no more false flags. Hey, Goo. But VRT News said that 153 of the 1,000 recordings it listened to were conversations that should never have been recorded, during which the command was clearly not given. That's 15%. That's yes, a shit that's, ton. That's a lot. That's a fuck ton. That's not a few random outside <laughs> no, cases. That's 15% of the 1,000 recordings. And 78 provided. million people bought smart home speakers. Yes. 15% of 78 million is still a metric fuck ton. Yeah. So, Holy uh, shit. Google was given a chance to respond. They have a lengthy quote in the article. I'm not going to sit over the whole thing. Google's response was more like, well, one of our language reviewers has violated our data security policies by leaking confidential Dutch audio data. They're more worried about like this, this data breach because the people working for them, probably as a subcontractor again, uh, you know, just leaked this, this information to, to the media. Yeah. Uh, Google said, as part of our work to develop speech technology for more languages, we partner with language experts around the world who understand the nuances and accents of a specific language. We apply a wide range of safeguards to protect user privacy throughout the entire review process, both internally and with our affiliates. Which is, sounds like exactly what something Google would say. Uh, point being, like I said, you're being listened to, uh, whether you want to or not, whether you've said the keywords or not, it would appear. And I want to get, so you know those pouches Tough. that they've been giving out at, at, um, Pouches? Yeah, those pouches that they've been giving out at, at, uh, at concerts, right? They do a concert, they don't want anyone to have their phone to show pictures or, or do recordings of it. So they make you put your phone in a pouch? Yeah, so these special pouches, you haven't been to anything? I don't think I've, uh, I've seen that yet. I've only but... been to one, uh, when we saw Dave Chappelle. Okay. And they had that, because... It was like an, it was like his new material. Right. He didn't want anyone recording it and getting out. So you, I see. yeah, you put your phone in this pouch and it like locks. Yeah. And then you, yeah, so you still have your phone, but you can't get at it or anything, and it blocks the signals really? from it. Point being, hmm. I'm gonna like well, like have one of those pouches to put my phone in when I just want a little bit of goddamn privacy. Yeah. No shit. Right. Okay. Damn, that's that's fucked up. But you know, it, it, it's tough because I feel like if they remove the human interaction and remove actual humans listening in on these conversations then you, you 
I mean, they're, they're doing it for a reason. They're doing it to improve the performance of the product. So I feel like there's sort of a, a sweet spot maybe that you, you kind of have to find a compromise with what you're comfortable with. Because if they just removed all human interaction, all human listening altogether, then these products would not work to the degree that they do. And you would have, and we'd be doing the same fucking show, episode 194 or whatever, complaining about how the, the internet is just shitting on these products for being terrible garbage products and that they're overpriced and no one should buy them because they can't figure out Taylor Swift from fucking suit me up with a tailor. Like, there's, there's got to so, be so that, some and, sort of and compromise. And that is the flip side. I, I, did, yeah. I did mean to, to mention that at some point, so I appreciate yeah. you bringing that, bringing that up. Right. You're right. If, if, if Google or Apple or Amazon wants these devices to work well, there has to be some sort of re review process. I think the question would be... Here are the top search results. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. You didn't even say it. I did not say it. You didn't even say you it. What is going on? Stop listening to me, Google. Yeah, I think I think I think employees are listening to us right now and they're just probably, fucking with probably, us. Yeah. Straight up fucking yeah. oh my god, how good would it be if we just trolled their street? Yeah, okay, so the question is, would be like who 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 is it? And and like subcontracting out to like third parties. I don't know. It just seems like if you're talking about something yeah. where it might be sensitive, personal information, mm -hmm. the subcontracting thing puts it at a distance, gives you the impression that they're farming this this work out to people who are they're paying less money. Right. And that's fine for certain stuff, mm -hmm. but you know, companies trying to run business and everything. But I don't know. I, there's 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 some middle ground there where they can still have a useful product. Right. And people can feel a little bit safer. But we're probably gonna, not going to get to that point. They're probably just going to become more and more encroaching on our privacy because people. It's so convenient. Maybe maybe to... until AI advances enough to where we don't need human interaction anymore. Yes. And it can just figure all that shit out. All right. One last story for Ojoy. This is the last one. We're going to go through it quickly. Completely unrelated. I don't know even why I'm bringing this up in relation to, to this, but this is from MIT Technology Review. Do you have Pentagon. more beer? Sorry. I do have more beer. <gasps> we should have more beer. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. The Pliny. The Pliny came and went so quickly. I yeah, know. It's beautiful, though. You want a Dale's Pale Ale or an Arrogant Master? Ooh. Ooh. Let's do an Arrogant. Let's, yeah, let's split that. Yeah, absolutely. I do not okay. want this all to myself. So yeah, the Pentagon has a laser that can identify people from a distance by their heartbeat. <laughs> oh, this is perfect segment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love this segment. It's yeah, so much that's fun. Great. <laughs> uh, so if you guys weren't aware, like the iris in your eyeball or your fingerprint, uh, your cardiac signature, your heartbeat, okay. is unique. Oh, God. And people can be uniquely identified oh, by God. their heartbeat. That's terrible. Uh, it can be used as a way to tell us apart, and the important bus. for this article, can be done from a distance. <laughs> uh, the U.S. Special Forces has developed for the Pentagon a device called Jetson, which sounds very... Very, because I'm like meet George Jetson and everything, right? That sounds like the Jetsons, very like the, friendly. Yeah, the, uh, the cartoon. Anyway, it's called Jetson. It, it detects a person's unique cardiac signature with an infrared laser, and it works at 200 meters or 219 yards mm -hmm. in freedom units. Uh, and according to the article, longer distances distances could be possible with a better laser. Lovely. Why the U.S. Special Forces and the Pentagon don't have the best lasers possible, I don't know. I guess they might have to go over to DARPA or something like that and be like, hey, give us a better laser. Um, <laughs> Sky's the limit. Creepy quote from Stuart Remily of the Pentagon's Combating Terrorism's Technical Support Office. I don't want to say you could do it from space. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. With no All right, I put the dot, dot, I put the dot, dot, dot in there. But does he follow that up with... <laughs> Like he says, I don't, I don't want to say you can do it from space, but longer ranges should be possible. Very vague. Oh my god. Yeah, that's... Like, they're close I, to I space. Just, I, just, I just immediately, like, I want video <laughs> of this art, of this of this interview, <laughs> because I guarantee the dude's there is like, I don't want to say you can do it from space. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's giving a look. And then he blinks some Morse code. A dry smile. He blinks some Morse code at the camera like, like <laughs> run fucking now. Take your family. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. 
We're watching you always. Anyway. Oh, God. Jetson uses a technique known as laser vibra vibrometry. Vibrator. Vibrometry. Mm. Vibrometry? That's not as exciting. Laser vibrometry, I think, would be the way, way to pronounce that. Sounds kinky. Uh, to detect the surface movement caused by the heartbeat, uh, and it works through typical clothing like a shirt and jacket. Will not work through thicker clothing like a winter coat, so everyone should dress warm if you don't want to be remotely identified by the Pentagon and U.S. Special Forces. Uh, they actually adapted it from an off-the-shelf device usually used to check vibration from a distance in structures such as wind turbines. They uh, attach that to a special gimbal so that an invisible quarter-sized laser spot can be kept on the target. Jesus. It takes about 30 seconds to get a good return. They're reporting over 95% accuracy. And another person in the Ooh. article quoted said they should probably get be able to get up to 98% accuracy, uh, which is more stable uh, and can reach... Anyway, he says compared to compared with face metrics, like identification by, like, you know, video of the face or something like that, cardiac biometrics are more stable and can reach more than 98% accuracy. Jeez. Very... Very interesting. So anyway. So does this mean like World War Three is going to be fought from space? Like there will be satellites that target specific faces and people based on their heartbeats where if like the next Saddam Hussein's just walking through the streets, he's just walking in just like a bullet from space or a laser from space, whatever. Just pinpoint 99.9% .9 accuracy from space. You can't retaliate unless you've got your own satellites to destroy that satellite somehow. Like... Is that where we're headed? Are we doing? Are we talking about space war now? Yeah. This is crazy. Uh, Kyle, like I, so I, I gave space up. Bullets. I've given, I've given up hope for the future of humanity long ago. Oh, of course. Um, as as has any rational human at this point. Of course. So really, the question is, when it comes to the, the technology available to ha to do this type of thing, is who 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 owns it, and what sort of nefarious uses might they put it to? Mm. Um, Russia and I. When it comes to in both America. governments and corporations, I have zero trust in any of them to use any of this uh, wisely or ethically, responsibly. Yeah. responsibly or anything. So, uh, oh joy! That is our segment. Thank you for watching. <sighs> I uh, thank God we drink on we the have, show. We have really positive stuff to talk about on Kyle's half of the show. Mm -hmm. So, if mm -hmm. you stuck through my half, thank you so much for joining us. Tech We're going to switch over to Kyle's half now. It's linked in the video description. Yep. Check that out. If you're watching it on Twitch, just uh, stay where you're at. Don't do anything. Uh, if you'd like to hit the thumbs up button on this episode, please do so. And uh, if you, and big thank you to the timestamp maker. Yes, we, we love you. Love you. So and also, Cell and Wifey in chat for moderating. Oh, and Cell and Wifey. We thank love you. you guys too. All right, thanks. And guys. Crafty, I see Crafty. Uh, too. Crafty, yeah. Crafty, I see. Hi, Crafty. And anyone else I missed? Okay, love you all. all right. Be right back. Thanks, guys.